My wife is going around town telling people's rumors and lies about me that's completely not true. The biggest lie that she's telling everyone is that I baby trapped her. Guys, baby trap. Let me tell you the real story about what really happened. I come from a family where both parents know their roles and play them perfectly. My father was the provider and my mother took care of the home. This did not stop her from pursuing her nursing career and seeing the dynamics between parents painted the kind of picture of what I envisioned my family to be when I got married. I turned 35 and I was yet to get a wife, though I was dating somebody at the time. I never introduced her to my family because my fiancé at the time did not meet my requirement being as homely as my mother. I was grateful that my parents never put pressure on me to get married. I've never liked animals, but my girlfriend at the time had a dog for a pet who was sick, so we both took him to the veterinary clinic to get it checked out, and it was there that we met my future wife, Samantha. She was 32 years and co-owned the place where her friend Sharon. I saw the way Samantha cared for these animals, and it made a good impression on me. She was like a mother to them, and it got me thinking that a woman who could take care of animals with such love was going to be a great mother to her children. I aired my opinion to my girlfriend while we left the clinic and she picked a fence and accused me of flirting with Sharon. If she had any bit of sense, she would have taken it as a cue to become homely. My girlfriend's accusation made me decide to never take her beyond the girlfriend level. I began avoiding her and I think she got the memo. We split up three months later and I used the opportunity to get things going with Samantha. The moment I indicated an interest in her, she began throwing herself at me. I appreciate it, as I was already seeing her as a future wife, she was homely. I proposed to her, but I did not have the talk of marriage in mind. I just wanted us to date for a while and then watched where it would lead us. The major reason I had proposed was that she said her parents wanted to pressure her into getting married to someone else, and I did not want to lose the woman I felt was, quote, wife material. Well... The moment I proposed to her to make sure that she was off the market, she started pushing for the wedding to take place. I told her that I did not want to rush into marriage, even though she was my ideal kind of lady. But she pleaded with me and said it had always been her desire to get married on her birthday. After listening to her, I decided to honor her request and asked when her birthday was. Well, it was a month away, and I was stunned, but I reasoned that if she was my ideal woman, what was the point of waiting? So, I went to her family and declared my intentions. It was then I discovered that they had actually been mounting pressure for her to get married. Her parents noted that she always put her work before anything else, and that was why she was unmarried at then. Well, I stood up by her defense by telling them I'd fallen in love with her the moment I saw how she took care of animals. I told them that I had no doubt Samantha would make a great mother. Her parents gave their consent and we began preparing for the wedding. And the period was too soon, but we were glad to have her friend Sharon assist. Samantha and I were soon wedded and the expectations of marital bliss, which I had, were not what I saw. We did not have a honeymoon, and this was because my wife did not see the need. She was concerned about what could befall her clinic in her absence, even though her friend Sharon was there to fill in for one week in which we were to be away. I didn't complain. I mean, we were newly wed, and I felt there was a lot of time for us to spend together. It soon turned out my thoughts were just wishes, as Samantha continued spending time with her animals while neglecting me. If the time she spent at the clinics was the only issue... I would not have been overly concerned, but no. Samantha refused to take in. She claimed that she was not ready to start bearing children yet. We had talked about the number of kids that we would have before our wedding, and my understanding was that we would start trying as soon as we got married. Well, I was just really bothered, but I tried being understanding as Samantha asked for more time. I had to use a contraceptive each time that we were intimate. A year down the line and things were still the same. I'd grown impatient. I was heading to 40 and I did not have a child of my own. I suggested to Samantha that we adopted a child since she was not ready for pregnancy, but she refused. She was neither ready nor pregnant was ready for kids. How ironic. The woman I thought would make a good mother was hesitant in getting kids of her own. I asked what her reason could possibly be, and she did not give any that satisfied me, so I threatened to end the marriage. 
It was her friend Sharon that intervened. Sharon advised her to not let her marriage, which was barely a year, go down the drain, as it was going to look bad on her professional career. It was after that she and her friend talked sense into her that she decided to give childbearing a shot. I really appreciate the relationship between my wife and her friend Sharon. Sharon was a single mother, and I wondered why a man would have jolted away from someone like her who had marriage sense. Two weeks after the near-divorce incident, Samantha took in. I was more overjoyed at the news of pregnancy than she was, and I guess it was because I was looking forward to having kids of my own more than she was. My happiness was short-lived when Samantha lost the pregnancy a week after. After we had mourned our loss, we decided to follow the advice of people who said that we should try again. Samantha and I tried our best for the next four months, but there was no result. I felt there was something wrong with us. I had us see a medical examiner. He checked us out and insisted that there was nothing wrong with me or my wife. And he advised that we just kept on trying, and that was what we did. I was frustrated by the whole thing and suggested to Samantha other alternatives like surrogacy or adoption, but she turned them down. She said she wanted kids and she carried in her womb, and I thought she was being sentimental. I was pained when I discovered that Samantha had been the cause of our problems all this while. It was on a weekend when we were supposed to be spending time together, but she was at the clinic as usual. I took the time to do some cleanup in the house, and that's when I bumped into some of the birth control pills that she's been taking. I confronted her about it when she came back and she did not deny it. There was no way that she could lie even if she wanted to, as she's never used the pills when we wanted to avoid pregnancy. I was the one using contraceptive. Samantha boldly said since she could not get me to wait till she was ready to get pregnant, she had to prevent it her way. I was heartbroken as I suspected there was every possibility she was responsible for the loss of the pregnancy which we all believe she miscarried. I could not hold my anger and I took the matter to her parents. They were mad after I was done narrating the issues to them as they too needed grandchildren. I informed my in-laws that though I loved my wife, she was pushing me to reconsider my decision about getting married to her. My in-laws were not willing to entertain the thought of me divorcing their daughter barely a year after I had gotten wedded to her, so they immediately sent for her. She was rebuked right in my presence for still doing the same thing that kept her single all these years, putting work before everyone and everything. The rebuke of Samantha's parents looked at me like pouring water on a stone, as I did not think it was going to make any difference. Anyways, they seemed to know how stubborn their daughter was, and so they asked me to let her stay with them for a few days, just to enable them to talk some sense into her. Whatever my in-laws told Samantha seemed to have worked as she straightened up at that moment she came back home. She took one week leave and asked her friend Sharon to handle the affairs at the clinic. We spent the week together, uh, pregnancy was the result. The moment it was discovered that she was pregnant, I informed her that she was not going to, well, work till our child was born. I didn't want to take chances with a second pregnancy, as I felt stress from work could lead to a miscarriage of a child. Samantha had a difficult time staying at home and taking her mind off of work. She was always on the phone with Sharon, who gave her updates about the situation of things at the clinic. She finally gave birth to a boy nine months later, and she wanted to resume her work within a month of it. Samantha approached me and asked that we hired a nanny who would be taking care of our child while we both worked. I was disgusted by her suggestion. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against my man taking away his wife's career simply because the traditional expectation of a woman was just to take care of a home. But Samantha's request was out of place. She just gave birth. I found it disappointing that the lady who I fell in love with, because I felt she was a good mother figure, was a sham. I told her, though, it wasn't wrong to employ the services of a nanny. It was too soon. Besides, I wasn't comfortable with a nanny taking care of my child unsupervised. Samantha begrudgingly accepted, and I was willing to get her family involved if she wanted to prove stubbornness. If I'm to be honest, I would say Samantha cared more for her animals than she did for our child. You might consider that statement somewhat harsh, but I know what I saw to have said that. Samantha and I were both at home one day entertaining visitors who came to see the child when Sharon's call came in from the clinic. I answered the phone and Sharon asked to speak with Samantha. She claimed it was emergency. 
Samantha shouted a few seconds after I passed the phone to her, and everybody present was startled. She jumped to her feet and headed for the door while ignoring the questions, and we asked her about what was wrong. I wasn't going to stay back and let my wife run off like a madwoman to where I did not know, so I asked somebody there to look after our son while I ran after Samantha. Samantha had already driven out of the compound before I could get to her, but I knew that there was a greater chance she was running towards the clinic since the call had come from Sharon. I got to the clinic and saw the reason my wife had jetted off the way she did. The clinic was in flames, though a fire truck was trying to put it out. I saw some people being carried off on stretchers, though there apparently was no serious injuries, at least no life-threatening ones. Samantha was on the floor wailing as Sharon tried to console her. I went to her and wanted to pick her up from the floor, but she screamed and asked me to leave her alone. Samantha's attitude changed ever since. I mean, she was angry at everyone. Even our child was not spared. You would have thought that she would devote more time to our kid now that her pet shop was burnt down, but that was not the case. Samantha neglected our son to the point that I had to get a nanny. I understood that she was going through a lot at the period, so... I gave her some space to come around, but I noticed her resentment towards me grew as the days went by. I tried talking to her about her attitude, and she blamed it on the fire accident. I decided I was going to talk to her friend about how our home was being affected. I paid Sharon a visit and brought her up to speed with what was going on in our home. I told her Samantha's excuse for acting the way she did, and she tried covering up for her friend by saying that humans reacted to things differently, and I was to be patient with her. I told Sharon that I understood my wife was going through a lot, but it was not an excuse. I pointed to the way she took care of her three-year-old son before reminding her that she was a co-owner of the same clinic that had burnt down. She had the perfect excuse to act secluded and neglect her son, but it did not stop her from paying attention to his needs. Sharon knew I was right, and her excuse for Samantha was laughable, so she went on to tell me the truth about the issue. She said that Samantha blamed me for what happened to the clinic and was even making claims that I had never been supportive of her career. Well, I quickly interrupted Sharon by asking her how I was at fault. I told her that I was actually making plans to raise funds for the reconstruction of the building, that was my way of showing support to my wife. So it made no sense to me that she would be accusing me of being unsupportive of her. Sharon explained further by saying that I had Samantha claimed I had a baby trapped her and the marriage thereby making her absent from work. According to her, things would not have gotten so bad if she was around the clinic like she was supposed to. So I got angry hearing Sharon's re hear my wife's accusation how could she accuse me of baby trapping her when she was the one who hurried me into getting married? Her statement showed her irresponsibleness that she was. Indeed, things are not always what they seem. I never imagined that the loving and doting doctor who took great care of animals would accuse me of baby trapping her simply because I insisted she took a few months off of work to take care of our baby. I think, Sharon. For what she had said and I was about to leave her alone when she pleaded with me to take things easy and not let my marriage fail. I fiend as though I was going to take things easy but I knew that I was going to do something. I got to the house and immediately demanded explanation from Samantha about why she was spreading these slanderous rumors about me baby trapping her. She responded rudely to me and asked what part of what she was saying was wrong. She even called her friend a backstabbing jerk for telling me what she had said behind my back. Samantha and I got into a heated argument right in the presence of, well, the nanny. I'd never witnessed my father lay a hand on my mother during my childhood days, and I'd always been of the opinion that it was immature for a man to hit his wife. But Samantha was pushing me towards falling off the edge of maturity. I knew I would hit her if I remained in her presence, and so... I left my house for three days. I stayed in a hotel where I reminisced about things and planned what I was going to do. Sharon rang my mobile line during my days at the hotel, but I did not pick up. I felt she had heard what happened and wanted to make peace between Samantha and me. That was something I did not want. I completed my three-day stay at the hotel two days ago, and I decided that I was going to get a divorce. I was tired of Samantha's drama in my life. I 
got to the house and she began running her mouth immediately when she laid her eyes on me. I lost my temper and gave her two dirty slaps. Were it not for the intervention of the nanny whom I'd hired, I would have beaten Samantha to a pulp. Samantha ran into her room and threatened to sue me for battery. Well, I, on the other hand, was planning a divorce, so I kicked her out of my house, and I called my in-laws yesterday to inform them that I would be coming to their house by the weekend to get them updated on the recent happenings. I want to officially hand over the divorce papers to their daughter in their presence. Update number one. I visited my in-laws yesterday. I got there and told them all that's transpired. I knew that Samantha had probably given a version of her story that would have made me the bad person, so I carefully started from scratch to make her parents understand that their daughter was not made for marriage. I rounded up my speech by telling them that I had filed for divorce and there was not going to me be going back. I dropped the divorce papers right there on the table while my in-laws tried making pleas with me. Samantha, who stood there, just hissed like a cat. Her parents demanded that she offered me an apology, but she bluntly declined. Samantha noted in the middle of everyone present that getting married to me was the worst mistake of her life, and she would have still been a successful vet doctor if she did not let herself get baby trapped by me. She called the divorce freedom, but noted that she was going to take custody of our son who was with me. This was something that would happen over my dead body. I knew my son would suffer if Samantha had custody of him, as he would end up being neglected. She never took care of him while we were living together, and there was no way that she would do so when she lived as a single mother. I'm sure the major reason she wanted to take him was just to cause me pain by denying me access to him. It was difficult tending my son. Yes, I had a nanny, but she did not live with me. She came during the day and left when I returned from work. Besides, I did not feel comfortable leaving my son with her. I had to attend to my son when I was at home and it was not easy especially during days when I had been worn out with office work. Sharon came to visit me one of those days, and she was sorry for the state of things between Samantha and me. The clinic she co-signed with Samantha had not been rebuilt, so she had nowhere to be going to. This was how she offered to take care of my son while I was at work. My son would spend the day with Sharon and her three-year-old son. While she brought him home to me when I returned in the evening, I soon started branching off at her place on my way back from work to pick up my son, and this was so that I could save her stress. My son has started spending some days at Sharon's place, and it's taken some weight off of my shoulders. I know it's too soon to say this, but I think I'm beginning to get attracted to her. I don't know if it's because she's been the mother to my son, which Samantha has failed to be. I can't say or do anything about it, though, as I'm involved in a messy divorce proceeding with her friend. Besides, I'm not sure if Sharon feels the same way, too. Update number two. The divorce proceedings with Samantha would soon be over, and I can't wait for it. Samantha continued to cause me problems, even though she doesn't live with me. She showed up unwelcomed at my house one evening after I returned from work and demanded to see her son. I was too tired, but I knew that we would have some form of argument. I told her she was going to see her son on the day of our hearing. She became enraged, and she said I had no right to deny her access to the child that she bore in her womb. She was already starting up her drama, which I was already used to. I told her son uh, wasn't with me, and she could go spend time with her animals. Samantha left my house that day in anger, and to make matters worse, she did not have a clue where our son was. I stopped by Sharon's place while returning from work yesterday evening, and we were all together. Me, her, and our sons. Ten minutes after I've gotten there, the doorbell rang, and you could tell that whomever it was on the other side was in a hurry. I was close to the door, so I decided to open it. I'd barely opened the door when the person on the other side shoved me aside and made her way into the house. It was Samantha. She was straight to Sharon and began insulting her while accusing her of being my secret lover, who helped to hide her baby all along. I wanted to throw Samantha out of there immediately, but Sharon was more patient than I was. She ignored the accusations, where, which, you know, were outrageous, and tried explaining to Samantha that she was only helping me by taking care of our child, and there were no strings attached to it. Samantha did not accept that Sharon had said to be true. She rather got physical with her while calling her a backstabbing jerk. I had to help Sharon kick my wife out of her house, but Samantha did not live in peace. 
She shamed Sharon and simply just told her that she could steal every man on the earth, but no one would ever take her seriously enough to marry her. After Samantha left, Sharon asked that I left her house too with my son. She was hurt by the things which my wife had said to her and did not want to be caught up in our problem. It's been three days since I left Sharon's place, and though I've tried reaching her via mobile phone, she's not been responsive. I'd give her some space till the divorce is done and the dust settles. The court session would be in a week, and I would have taken leave from work so I could take care of my son. If I'm granted custody of him, I would need to rehire the nanny who I fired ever since Sharon was filling the role for me. Update number three. Well, I'm glad to announce that I'm now happily divorced father of one. Sharon showed up at my house three days before my divorce hearing. She told me how unbearable Samantha had made her life become, and Samantha had been sending hateful messages to her mobile phone, tagging her of defamatory posts that she made on social media. Sharon was bitter, and I could see she wanted to get back at my wife, and I gave her the opportunity. She had witnessed my wife's attitude from the onset and even tried playing the mediator to save our marriage so her testimony about my wife's inability to be a good mother to our son would have me get full custody of him. The day came and Samantha was surprised to discover that Sharon's testimony would be used. It was while she was trying to make the judge see the kind of woman Samantha was that I discovered. The pregnancy which Samantha had claimed miscarried was actually, well, she got rid of the baby. Samantha accused me of being the bedrock behind her current career woos, the burning of the clinic, by going with the baby trapping lie, and she claimed I wanted her to put an end to the career while I slept with her friend who had just testified against her. Samantha's words would have made Sharon's testimony less effective, but they did not. I won custody of our son, though I lost my house to my now ex-wife. The good thing besides the custody of my son was that I was not going to be paying any form of alimony to Samantha. On the other hand, she was required to pay child support. Samantha was not pleased with the ruling and she vowed to seek a retrial. I knew she was bluffing. I had to move out of the house because I needed a place for my son and me to stay before, you know, an agent and I had contacted me to get an apartment would come up with something. Sharon, who was still nursing the wounds from Samantha's slanderous actions, offered me her place to stay. I could not refuse it as it was something I badly needed, and that was how I temporarily moved in with her. We started getting overly comfortable with ourselves within a short while, and I would not call us a family, but there was nothing more to a family besides what we had. Sharon and I soon began getting intimate, and... I asked her to marry me so we could officially put a name or tag to what we were doing. She was hesitant at first. She said that I had just gotten a divorce from her used-to-be best friend, and it would only strengthen the lies that she was spreading about her, and I knew Sharon was talking from her head to her toe, and not from her heart. Her son had bonded with mine, and she had grown attached to having us around, so <laughs> I easily convinced her to get married to me. We got formally engaged and our wedding, which would be small little ceremony, would be held next week. I would be making my next update as a married man. Final update. Hey guys, I'm happily remarried for the second time. Sharon and I encountered some objections along the way. After the announcement of our wedding was made, we began receiving hateful messages sent to us. We felt like we were being stalked. We suspected that my ex-wife Samantha was behind the whole thing and we were right. One of the messages that talked about the both of us not waiting a while before going public with our stupidity gave her up. The message came with a gift box that contained a dead cat. It just had to be Samantha. She knew how much I did not like pets and Sharon became scared. She wanted us to postpone the wedding till we properly dealt with the issue, but I refused to give my ex-wife the satisfaction Sharon and I both visited Samantha and we told her to her face that we knew she was beside our bizarre, scary experience, but she fiend ignorance. She said she was not angry that I and Sharon were together, but she felt pity for Sharon as she would be the next victim of a miserable life. We did not trade words with her. We knew she was lying and so we apologized for the accusation. Sharon smiled and informed her that we would be getting married. Samantha wished us well and we left. The hateful messages and the dead animal stuffed in a box intensified. The messages now contained threats to our lives. So, 
we went to go ahead and add some surveillance cameras. Installed at discreet places in our home, it was not long before we had the footage of Samantha dropping off the boxes during odd hours of the night. We reported the matter to the police and she was quickly apprehended. A search was carried out in her home and pictures of Sharon and I with hateful messages were littered in one of the rooms. This occurred on the day of our wedding. Well, Sharon and I got the wedded the next day and we paid a visit to Samantha who was being held down at the police station. We needed her to meet the latest couple in town. We had both decided to press charges against her and Sharon was equally going to sue her for defamation. She would be found guilty of all charges and she would spend a long time behind bars. Before leaving, I informed her that Sharon and I are both saving to start up an animal clinic, which would be Sharon's business. Samantha could do nothing other than curse us as we took our leave. It's been three weeks with the new family, and for the first time in my life, I can say that marriage is sweet. So, OP's first wife, Samantha, was a toxic individual, and all I can say is that karma always finds a way to strike. At the end of this story, it looked like she found herself wound up in jail because she was stalking, making threats, delivering dead animal parts. I mean, this whole story was just so absurd. I want to know your thoughts about it, but I also want to know what you think about OP marrying Sharon. A lot of people were saying it was too soon, this is going to make Sharon look like she was the bad person in the whole story, they're going to think that things were happening way before, during the marriage, maybe cheating, who knows. I just want to know, do you think it was a smart move for OP to get married right away to Sharon? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for joining me on today's video. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day, so if you want to be a part of them, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.